Okay, for this next Physio X, we're going to do exercise two, skeletal muscle physiology. This uh, activity one is this video. That's the uh, required assignment. And again, you can do, and I certainly encourage you uh, to do any of the other activities. There are several uh, to choose from, but activity one is uh, the one we're going to do. And I don't know what that, that's a new screen. That's never happened. Um, I just hit the refresh button and it, it seemed to work. So, um, so if that happens to you, just hit refresh and it should pop up. Um, and again, remember, you need to submit the review questions at the end. Some of you have, a lot of you have the, the physical text. So uh, those review questions, this has the card with it. Those review questions are in the book as well. If you're having issues with uh, this, you can watch the video and then answer the questions and submit those. Okay. Uh, if you're having issues, certainly accessing PhysioX. So anyway, this first uh, activity goes through uh, some of the basic terms of excitation contraction. So in other words, the nerve needs to be, one of the things we know about nerves and about muscles is they do have uh, the ability to be excited uh, or stimulated. So we, we need that excitation uh, to trigger uh, some sort of response. So the con contraction is gonna be the response that we get. So this is in essence what we see going on with the neuromuscular junction and the release of acetylcholine to that muscle cell or muscle fiber, and then getting that uh, uh, calcium to leave the sarcoplasmic reticulum and uh, ultimately lead to actin and myosin binding together. So it talks a little bit about that, the electrical stimulus, uh, muscle twitch. Uh, we'll look at three different phases, uh, the latent period, the contraction phase, and the relaxation phase. This particular activity does focus on uh, the latent phase or the latent period. <clears throat> So anyhow, we'll look at some muscle twitch intensities and, uh, and measure that latent period. Now, uh, and again, a little bit of background uh, on what a motor unit is. And again, you're going to want to watch uh, my video uh, or any of the Padlet videos that discuss how a muscle contracts before you do uh, this physio X activity. So in essence, then these terms should be a, a review. So, and remember too, you can click on those highlighted uh, figure icons or hyperlinks. And again, you need your, to have your pop-ups enabled for PhysioX and you'll be able to see uh, some of the figures. This particular figure shows uh, a muscle cell or muscle fiber, kind of what's going on there. And again, we can see the axon terminal. This is the nerve. And in the, that axon terminal, we have little vesicles filled with acetylcholine. Okay, and then we're going to get that acetylcholine uh, when a stimulus comes down, that acetylcholine will get released and it'll bind, it'll travel across the synapse, what we call the synaptic cleft. It'll travel across that synaptic cleft and bind to the motor end plate. There'll be acetylcholine receptor sites uh, on the muscle, uh, specifically uh, what we call uh, the sarcolemma which would be uh, basically the cell membrane of this muscle fiber slash muscle cell. Okay, so again, it says muscle fiber. That's a fancy word for muscle cell. So remember, all tissues are, are composed of uh, cells. So muscle tissue is composed of muscle cells, specifically muscle fibers. Okay, so anyway, we see that nerve come in, the neuro part, and then attaching or plugging into the muscle the muscular part. So we call this the neuromuscular junction. And then we can see the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, which is where the calcium is stored. Okay, and then these T-tubules, where we're going to see some of the uh, excitation, some of the sodium rushing in, uh, altering the charge uh, of this area, and, and in essence, kicking calcium out of its, uh, uh, where it's normally stored. So calcium will get released. Now, 
they're even the most intense muscle contractions, they're going to require a lot of calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. However, uh, there's still going to be more calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum than outside of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So what I'm getting at when we think about our diffusion, osmosis, active transport, all of these different mechanisms uh, of cellular transport, when we're trying to get calcium, when the muscle's relaxing, when we're, we're trying to get calcium to go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, there's still more calcium there than is trying to get in. So calcium's trying to go move against its concentration gradient. So we will see calcium pumps uh, in, this, uh, in this area of the muscle cell. And again, we see the word pump, we instantly want to think ATP or energy is required. So energy, can, we're going to see ATP uh, also needed uh, to get, um, in essence, to get myosin to unbind from actin too. So to get a muscle to relax, we need ATP or energy to unbind uh, those filaments. And then we also need ATP to get the calcium pumps moving uh, calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So my point is there's a lot of energy needed to get a muscle to contract and ultimately to relax. Okay, okay so Anyhow, that's a little bit of the background on muscles and how muscles contract and relax uh, more or less at the cellular level. So there's a little bit of, again, uh, fancy terminology, excitation contraction. That just means we're getting uh, this process of acetylcholine release triggering uh, that end plate, that motor end plate or that muscle cell uh, to, to change or for action to occur. Uh, and that's going to, again, initiate calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, and thus uh, a contraction to occur. Okay, so uh, part of that excitation uh, contraction coupling, as soon as a stimulus comes across that nerve and, and stimulates the muscle uh, to contract, we're going to get a small period of time uh, where we're not going to see any type of, of filament connection and muscle contraction. This period of time is called the latent period. And latent, in essence, means hibernating or, or at a standstill. Okay? So, um, so stimulus comes in, the time from acetylcholine uh, connecting or being released and connecting uh, to the sarcolemma, to those acetylcholine receptors on the muscle fiber, to going down through the T-tubules, triggering the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and then that calcium going in uh, and unveiling uh, the binding sites for myosin, uh, that takes a little bit of time uh, and that's called the latent period. So from a stimulus at the nerve to the muscle fiber to getting actin and myosin bound together uh, and creating a contraction, that small period of time is called the latent period. Once actin and myosin are bound together, we get a contraction called the contraction phase. And then once they detach from one another, calcium goes back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. We call that the relaxation phase. So three phases of them, fairly straightforward, really. We've got this small period of time where all of the molecules are getting organized, latent period. And then we actually get the contraction and then we get the relaxation. Again, when what we one thing we know about muscles is again, they have the ability to relax and to, contr and to, uh, to contract. Okay? They have uh, extensibility, uh, flexibility, and stretchability. We call it contractility as well. All right, so anyhow, just some of the, of the background there. So again, we're gonna be looking at the latent period. So you can go through and answer those questions. And again, you're gonna to wanna to hit submit uh, at the end of each one to collect your data. Although I do just go through and grade the review questions. So if you do forget to click submit on those, that's fine. So anyway, we're gonna look at, uh, we've got a muscle uh, that's, uh, that 
it's hooked up, it's in a, a, a subtle state uh, of stretch, and we're going to give it uh, a little bit of, of stimulate or a little bit of stimulus. And the stimulate it, we're going to start at zero. Of course, we shouldn't expect to see anything happen. So I'm going to click stimulate with zero volts. So as we look at the line, we see that yellow line isn't doing anything. So that's what we would expect. So then we hit record data. So zero volts, we've got the muscles uh, lengthened to 75 millimeters and we didn't uh, get any type of force. So, uh, and again, we're gonna, we click next on this one. Some of these physio X's are different than others. Some, as soon as you do what it tells you to do, it goes to the next thing and then you do that. Some of them, some of these other ones like this one, you have to physically click next at the bottom to move to the next thing. Now it says to record the data, which we just did. Now we're going to increase the voltage to three. Okay, and again, it's going to say, uh, it's not going to say anything. We just move it to three. We click next, and then it's going to tell us to click stimulate. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> so we gave it a little jolt and we got a muscle contraction and a relaxation. Okay, so when we hit next, and it's gonna tell us to record the data. So we come down here, click record data. So we gave it three volts. It was uh, 75 millimeters active force generated that we're able, that, that's measurable uh, was 100 and, or was 1.04, okay. Total force, 1.04. Some of the other physio X's will talk about passive force, active force, and total force. But for now, we're just analyzing the very basics of getting a muscle to contract. So we're giving it a little bit of nerve. We're connecting a nerve, some electricity to it, giving it a little bit of a jolt, and then checking uh, to see uh, where that latent period is, if in fact it does exist, and whether that latent period is different based on uh, increasing voltage. All right, so that's that. For that, it says clear tracings, then hit next. Increase the voltage to four. Click next. Select stimulate. So again, we see we bumped up or increased the voltage. We got a little stronger uh, force of contraction again is not really what we're measuring. We're measuring, uh, we're going to be looking at the latent period. Okay, so we click stimulate, and then it's going to ask us a question. What's the period of time that elapses between the generation of the action potential and the start of muscle tension? So the start of the contract uh, contraction period, again, we call the latent period. Okay, so now we're going to measure what that latent period is in time. So uh, we come up here, it says select measure on the stimulator, and then a thin line is going to appear, and then there's a plus minus button. So we can move that, and we're going to move it to the point where we just start to see uh, a contraction. Okay, so let's do that now. So we're going to click measure, and then uh, where it says time, I'm gonna click the plus button and then you can start to see that yellow vertical line show up. And we're, again, we're looking at when we start to see force and there we go. So 3.2 milliseconds, that's how long the latent period is. Okay, so we find that and then we click record data. So now we're collecting data on the latent period. Okay. And then we're going to clear tracings. Oops. And then click next. And then it asks us a couple of things. Do we think the latent period is going to increase or decrease or stay the same uh, based on changing the voltage? So I don't know. You can pick whatever you want. I'm just going to click yes. I could pick no, right? but I don't want to give anything away. So this is just what, what do you think? Okay. So 
Um, I think I ended up clicking no. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, click yes or no. I don't. That's why you're running the experiment to see if your observation uh, or your hypothesis uh, is correct. So now we're going to increase voltage by two volts till we get to 10. Right now we're at four. So we're going to increase to six. We're going to click stimulate. And then we're, we can measure that latent period while that's still going. So let's, again, we're going to bump it until we see numbers. And there we go, 3.2. We start to see a little bit of force generated. And I want to say that's what we saw before. And there you go. So we increased voltage. Latent period did stay the same. Okay, so we're going to bump it up to eight, stimulate. You get a little bigger, a uh, little stronger contraction or force of contraction, which again, that's not what we're measuring. Latent period looks pretty, uh, pretty much the same. So let's see if that's the case. Still nothing in the four. Oh, there we go. We generate force right again at 3.2. And you click record data. And then one last time we go to 10, we'll click stimulate. And sure enough, it looks like that latent period is just about uh, the same. So let's find out if it is. And there we go, 3.2. And click record data, scroll down. We have our four, six, eight, and 10. We have the latent periods being the same. And that's it. And then uh, click next. It'll ask you a couple things. You want to hit submit, of course. Okay, and submit again. And then to get, you know, you can answer these. I certainly recommend it. And then you want to get to uh, ultimately to your uh, review questions. Okay, so that's it. That's your uh, physio X uh, exercise uh, on latent period. And again, here's your, your results and all of your answers. And if you go to the bottom, and again, you want to enable your pop-up blocker uh, to not be blocking. You want to allow this site. Okay. And then type your name. And OK. And then again, hit Print Save As. This is where the pop-up blocker comes into play. If nothing happens when you click that, you need to enable your pop-up blocker. So right there, save as PDF, and then click save, and you're done. Okay. So again, if you have questions, send me an email. I'll get back to you, and uh, we'll figure it out.